Good day and welcome to this wonderful webinar from Golden Key. While we are waiting for the attendees to join, please put your name and surname in the chat function and tell us where you are logging in from. Carla Watson from Cape Town, a cold Cape Town. Welcome, Leanne Brink, also from Cape Town. Good day. Carla says it's very cold. Natasha from Centurion. Welcome, Natasha. So while we wait for the other attendees, Prudence from Bloemfontein, Serieta from Potschefstrom, welcome. Catherine from Joburg, also cold. I see everybody is having winter time to the max. Anka Bulungwa from Kempton Park, Catherine from Joburg, welcome. Welcome everyone, please feel free to put your name and surname in the chat function. Sarah, good luck is Brits, I hope I pronounced that right. Welcome Sarah, we are so happy to have you. Welcome to this lovely enlivening Golden Key webinar. We are so happy to have you with us today. Please put your name and surname in the chat function as you join and please tell us where you are logging in from. Uncha, welcome. Good afternoon all, I'm Chloe Saunders from Cape Town. Welcome Chloe. Hi, Chloe says hi to everyone. Welcome to this lovely webinar. We are going to have such a lovely time together with our wonderful speaker. As you are logging in, please put your name and send them in the chat function. We'll give it a few more moments before we read the bios of the speaker. And without further ado, let us read the bios of our speaker. Angel Ancha Lindwawa Bulungwa was born and raised in the kingdom of Itswani, Itswatini. She's a Rhodes University alumni, an Alan Gray Fellow and Mandela Rhodes Scholar 2017. She's currently a program officer at the Jakes Gerwell Fellowship and Alan Gray Orbis Foundation Endowment Teaching Initiative, where she has the honor of providing coaching and leadership development to top learners with a passion for teaching and education. It was at Waterford Glaba United World College of Southern Africa that Anka realized her passion for youth development through though participating in community service projects. She went on to develop skills and gain more experience in mentoring, coaching and facilitation as a student at Rhodes University. In 2014, she was awarded the Student Volunteer of the Year Award. She loves meeting new people and when time allows, spends time in the kitchen experimenting with different dishes. Wonderful, especially in this time of the lockdown. Carla Watson, a former high school English teacher was recognized through the prestigious award from the Mail and Guardian Young 200 South Africans for her contribution in education in South Africa 2019. She was further awarded as one of the 50 most powerful women in South Africa, Mail and Guardian 2020. She is part of the founding team of the Jakes Jewel Fellowship, Alan Gray Orbis Endowment a scholarship designed to develop young people into expert high school teachers, educational leaders and social entrepreneurs across the country. A published writer, she is passionate about social justice in South Africa with a focus on healing and sustainable growth for the country. She's an activator, feminist and strategic rock star. When she isn't improving South Africa, she is convincing her cat Thunder to become a lab cat. We welcome you all here today and we look so forward to joining this session with you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Juanita, and a warm welcome to everybody who's joined us today on, on, on our, our session together. I just want to confirm and let my colleague Ancha uh, help me here. Are we looking at the right screen? Ancha, if you can just unmute yourself and let me know. Yes, we are. Up. Okay, because I'm a bit blind. I can't, I can't see anyone. But first and foremost, I want to thank you for your time. It is a very strange time to be alive and to be in South Africa at this, in this particular day and moment. Um, and, and for you to carve out the mental and emotional space to attend something that is going to talk about hope and social change. I just want to acknowledge and recognize that this is a delicate, fragile moment for, for people in South Africa. 
Um, and, and you being here and showing up means a lot to me and Ansha, but also it should mean a lot to you too for finding the space to, to, to join us today. Um, yeah, there's lots I can talk about that, but, but we've come together for a reason and we've come together to learn a little bit more about the Jake Scavell Fellowship. Um, we do have a surprise situation of our Chloe Saunders in our, in our attendance here today, who's currently on the program. So Chloe, if I do lean on you a little bit later, you know why, because I do believe your voice is more important than, than, than what Ansha and I have, might have to say. So welcome again. Um, we've heard wonderful uh, bios about us, so you know a little bit more about myself as head of the graduate teaching program, and I'm joined today by Ancha as well, wonderfully a rock star in her own right, who's a program officer at JGF. And we're going to tag team this, so you'll hear a bit from me, and then you'll hear a bit from, from Ancha. Um, but please, I am a teacher, so I might talk a little bit too much. Drop your questions in the chat, unmute yourself, come into the conversation. Um, this I'd like to be as interactive as possible um, and not too much of a passive engagement, but, but we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. We will be with you for about 45 minutes to make sure that we've got some time at the end just to uh, answer any questions or curiosities or simply, you know what, I might not want to be a teacher, but can you help me with something else? So to begin, there's a picture on the screen and the screen says, 13 million. Now that number might just be a little bit outdated, but the essence of this is to say that every day about 13 million young people, school going people wake up and go to something that kind of looks like a school. There might be some walls, there might be some desks and chairs, and there's some sort of learning and teaching that either is supposed to happen or is happening. But the reality is, very sadly in our country, is that only the top blue row of people will actually go to a school that's effective. In other words, ma the majority, 10 million, the majority or, or the largest proportion of school going students in this country are effectively going to schools and places of learning that don't really do anything. And this is an important point. It could be a stat, of course, you know, with pretty colors and, and some numbers, but rather I find it quite emotionally heavy, to be honest, to know that as an educationalist and as an activist for education, as a, as a vehicle for change, that the majority of our young people are not being served, are not receiving education that matters and, and, and helps them move through their lives and lived experiences. And if something like this bothers you, if something like this from your own lived experience or your community or even just the picture on the screen upsets you or makes you feel a bit uncomfortable, I want you to keep listening quite closely because at JGF, we focus on situations around how can we solve the problems in education? And we believe the classroom is the first step for that. Now, we hear lots, those of us in education hear lots about Finland. I've studied there. I did part of my master's in Finland in education. It's an excellent space to learn. It really does have one of the best education systems in the world. And how they maintain that is they only let 10% of their top graduates become teachers. And the word let there is quite important. So, you know, I'm a bit of a, I'm a teacher, I'm an English teacher as well. But the word let indicates that they don't just take the top 10%, they don't just recruit, they only let, so they get hundreds and hundreds of applications and they only look for the very best. And at JGF, we believe in doing something a bit similar. Now, our country is complicated today, case in point, but outside of that, we have many, many social challenges about people's lived experiences around what could that top 10% look like. And what we do in our selection process, which I'll happily talk about a little bit later, or Chloe can talk about it too, is we look for people who are the very best in reflection to their lived experiences. So there is an academic requirement, of course, because we are university-based scholarships, so you need to be able to complete your degree. But we look for people who, when they look at the question on the screen, understand and grasp the impact of the teaching profession. So I'm going to take, a, I'm going to pause there for a bit and take a step back at the same time. The words on the screen says, who is your favorite teacher and why? And I'd like you to answer that in the chat function, please. I'd like you to think back, maybe not that far ago, maybe much longer. So Natasha, Jillian, Juanita, you, I'm also asking you to drop your, your comments here. Who pops up 
somebody pops up in your head about who was your favorite teacher and just let me know a little bit as to why. Professor Juanita shared Professor Fika van Rensburg is very patient and kind. Thank you, Juanita. I'm going to give you a little bit, a little bit longer for, for some other comments to come in. So we've got Northwest University. Great. Thank you, Juanita. Jillian shared Benny van der Linde, also Northwest University. Natasha sharing Mr. P. Nyker, my math teacher. He was kind and very involved with the students. We've got about nine other students also on here, please come, come through and bring your voice in. Chloe sharing Professor Joel Yobe from UCT. She's an absolute gem. Thank you for those who have dropped some comments. Jillian <laughs> is highly intelligent. Omisa, wonderful. High school business economics teacher. She was a great teacher. Thank you, Omisa. Suretha, I hope I'm saying it correctly, and please help me phonetically otherwise. Your fro Marti, she was my agricultural teacher. She had a kind heart and always made extra time for children who did not understand work. Ancha, Mr. V. B. Tlamini, who was my chemistry and bio teacher. He challenged us to always do better than yesterday. Mm, thank you. Thank you for letting me know and sharing with other people about uh, who was your favorite teacher and why. Ipilings has come in. Mr. Ditibani, my high school English teacher, he was very supportive and still is even today. Then we got Mr. Yeah, it's coming through. Dr. Eforsa from UFS. Always love how he breaks down the content for us to understand clearly. Leanne, shoo, lots are coming through here. And, and while I may not get to each and every point, the reason JGF asks this question and the reason it matters is because no matter what kind of lived experience you've had, whether it was negative or positive in, in a schooling context, there is somebody that stands out to you that you're willing to share about as being a teacher of influence. And I'll have you know, almost everyone who responds to this question doesn't say they remember the subject content. They don't go, wow, my English teacher, she really taught me nouns really well or Shakespeare. No, no. The level of influence as a teacher is far beyond subject content knowledge. And that's the essence of what we do at JGF. So this question, well, is a, is, a, is a question that we like to ask. And it's interesting about how easily, no matter how old you are, what shape or form you come up in, in your lived experience, there is something and somebody that resonated with you while you were in school. And just as much if I had to flip it and ask you who was your not so favorite teacher, again, someone comes up <laughs> and for various reasons. But what we can't deny is the impact and role of a teacher on people's lives and their lived experiences. And what funds, um, or, or funds the wrong word, but what drives us at JGF to some degree around um, the, deci the, the decisions we make is that there was a report from McKinsey political or not political, whichever, they did this report in 2007 that, folk, that that showed that the only way you can improve a schooling system in, in, in any country or any society is about the, the, the investment and the appreciation and the level to which you elevate the teachers of your country. And we've decided that at JJ, if we look for individuals, high impact individuals who are going to go on and then make change. And, and my, my, my co-presenter, Ancha, I'm going to hand over to her on the next slide, in that there's a journey to impact that she's going to take us through about how JGF accepts and appreciates the classroom as the first vehicle for change in South Africa, but also acknowledges other pathways or journeys to impact. The younger we get, the older we get, there's more to us. Sometimes we want to be beyond the classroom. Sometimes you want to stay in the classroom. And JGF recognizes you in your entirety. I get passionate. I do. Ancha, please bring your voice in or unmute so that I know that you're around, so that I can so that I can hand over to you to, for the next little bit. Sure, Carla. Thank you. I'm here. <laughs> okay. So Carla has already spoken about 
how at JGF there is a proposed journey to impact. Um, so when you come in to us and you apply, um, we come, we take you as you are, all of you. And we do acknowledge that you come with a lot of passions and there are things that you might be doing now that we want to hear about. So what are the things that you're doing in leadership? What are the things that you're doing in sporting? So even our application form is tailored around that to get more than just the individual who's going to go into the classroom. What else is out there? What more do you do? And from there, if you come in and you're successful, um, then you go on a journey of three years and as an undergraduate student, and here we support you um, while you continue to build your journey. And when you graduate from your third year, and in your third year, you will be doing your teaching subjects. <clears throat> so your two teaching subjects, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and we make sure that you are, you, you choose the right subjects for yourself so that when you get to PGCE, which is where most of you right now would be going, um, is what, what are you going to be training on? What are you practicing on? And so we want to make sure that being an expert teacher is not something that you meet when you get to PGCE, but it's something that you journey on from your first year and we support you, we walk the journey with you and make sure that by the time you get to PGCE, you are well-placed to be able to be the expert in your subject matter. And from there, from PGCE, when you become qualified, we have two levels. So at this point, JGF is really still young on the journey, but where we are now is at the stage where we've had our first PGCE intake and the next levels are our NT, newly qualified teacher level one and level two, because we don't leave you alone. Once you've qualified as a teacher, we'll still walk with you. And we were there to make the landing softer because we understand that teaching is not an easy space to go into. We know the, 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 the situation in South Africa. So we make sure that the first two years, we're still walking with you to make sure that in, and as you progress as a teacher, as an expert teacher, um, you are protected and you are supported to excel. And then the next part is, you know, there's different journeys, right? That all of us want to go on to. And we believe that you, you don't need to be confined into the classroom. So you, as an expert teacher, then you can also become an educational leader and you can also become a social entrepreneur. But some of our candidate fellows are also are already social entrepreneurs while they are actually on the journey. Um, some of them were in the, this year, um, were on the Mail and Guardian to top 200. Um, and that already says, speaks a, 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 lot of, a, a lot of substance to the kind of candidates that we have in the program. Um, you can continue, Carla. Um, so you might be thinking, so are, I, you know, are there people behind this? Who are already on this journey, or it's just you know just numbers and you know, and the truth is they are. So when we started in 2017, our first intake came in 2018, and we had 17 candidate fellows. In 2019, we added on 42 um, candidate fellows were in the class of 2019. In 2020, we grew to 70. In 2021, we're now sitting to in on 135. And because we value um, individual, individualized support for our candidate fellows, even our staff component has grown to make sure that as our candidate fellows grow and need more support, we're also growing and able to offer that. So you see faces here, and these are people with names, these are people with passions, these are people with hopes and dreams and fears. And you too can be on the screen next year as our, one of our PGCE candidate fellows. And so we've heard from me and Carla now, we have um, two videos that would like to share with you of our candidate fellows where they are sharing with us their experience of how it is to be a candidate fellow and why they've chosen to be on this journey. Carla? Oh, thank you, Ancha. I'm going to click play. And as per usual, if the sound doesn't come through, just unmute yourself and let me know, please. Sure. So I applied for the Jake's Herbal Fellowship. 
fellowship because I believe that teachers are the most important people in the world. And unfortunately, I don't think there are enough teachers in our country who are equipped or ready for this role. If the future is of ours and, the cho and children, pupils are the clay, then teachers are the sculptors that are molding that clay into a beautiful and efficient vase. But I don't just want an efficient vase, I want a vase that is going to be the best the world has ever seen. I want to be a part of that group of teachers who are going to mold this vase into something beautiful and different and the best. And I feel like that's what Jake's Hair will do. They get a group of people who are going to be those sculptors who are going to mold the best vase the world has ever seen. Um, I foresee myself, or I hope, that I'm going to be a teacher that's going to teach more than just photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Those are very important functions that I believe everybody should learn, learn about and know. But I also want to teach children about being open-minded, being respectful, being loving, being good people. Because I feel like today the society is so filled with hate and pain and prejudice. Every day you hear of a new attack to, on people based on their religion, their beliefs, their sexuality, their race, their gender. And all those characteristics are what make people people. And I feel like teachers have the power and the ability to shape young minds into more open-minded views, more positive views, and to just be all around better people. So that's my wish for, for the future, to have better individuals. That was Amber Mulder. Um, and the context here is we ask our candidate fellows to, whoops, no video, sorry. Uh, we ask our candidate fellows to tell us about their vision and it's not scripted or prompted. They prepare and they share it. We're now going to hear from Andris, who's studying at the University of Pretoria. Personally, the reason why I applied for JGF is that they can back me up, support me and guide me through my journey of being a teacher. And, I'll be, and with my one year experience of teaching, I saw that teaching is more than just a job, but a sense of calling because it requires hard work, dedication and love for education. And I believe that I have all those qualities. And the role I see myself fulfilling the vision of JGF is by being a teacher who believes in the power of collaboration and communication with learners, and as well as encouraging critical thinking as well as empathy. And I will fulfill the vision of JGF by being a teacher who takes teaching beyond the classroom. And in fulfilling the vision of JGF, it will take me and other teachers to see ourselves as solutions rather than victims to challenges faced by both teachers and learners. Uh, by being a teacher, by being an expert teacher, an educational leader, and to see change in education will definitely take time. But there's always a start to something, and the good news is we have already started. Thank you. I really like Andres. <laughs> and I'm quite excited to, be, to bring his voice in at, 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 in these different moments. Um, before I go into what's on the screen around the journey to impact that we support at JGF, there's some questions and I wanna address them now while we're here. So Leanne has asked a great question um, and, and while it's available to everybody, I'm just gonna bring a little bit of information for, from an auditory perspective. So Leanne's question is around, I really wanna do a PGCE, but I fear that I do not have the proper subjects. I'm a BA student and then they list their subjects and wants to know if they qualify for a PGCE or not. Now Leanne, Yes and no. <laughs> so what I'd need to ch chat to you about is your transcript, right? So in, in, to qualify as a teacher with a three plus one model, sorry, which is three years undergrad or three year BA plus one year PGCE, it depends on the levels to which you've taken different courses. So you've got linguistics, psychology and anthropology, but I'd need to know at, from what levels in terms of your, your years, uh, have you taken it up to first year, second or third? Have you majored in them and questions like that? And then I can help you figure out which subject you are then qualified to teach. And some institutional knowledge, here, um, because everyone here is interested in, in completing uh, qualifying as a teacher, is that there is a national policy that guides whether or not you can become a teacher based on your undergrad. So it's not JGF say no, it's not University of Free State, UCT, what, what. There's a, a very strict policy. It's called affectionately Mr. Tech, and it stands for the minimum requires, requirements for teacher education qualifications. 
Um, so that's why I ask you about your levels and to what year did you take a, a course up until, because it, it does matter. Even if someone has a doctorate in something, the undergraduate degree is what determines whether you are eligible for, for PGCE enrollment when you follow undergrad plus one year. Prudence has mentioned being a Bachelor of Education student. I'm coming to you, Prudence. That's a different way of qualifying as a teacher and doesn't require the levels because the entire four year degree is focused on, on qualifying as a teacher. So helpful, Leanne. So that's very helpful. So we can then, um, I can help you construct your degree so that you make sure that you've got the appropriate teaching, uh, teaching subjects to the right level to then qualify to teach them. Um, so you're at the right moment in terms of your undergrad being a second year student, not quite ready for us, to be honest, but that's a different conversation. But now is a good time to really design your degree in a way that makes you more employable in terms of the, the number of teaching methods that you're able to do. So our details are going to be somewhere on this on the screen, screenshot Leanne or whichever, find out how to contact us, be very good on WhatsApp as well, um, so that we can help you uh, uh, structure your degree in that way. Now you'll notice this isn't even about you wanting to apply for JGF. I'm interested in your journey to become a teacher, whether you're on our fellowship or not. Um, so this invitation and offers real, because if you go on to be a teacher, then this is a worthwhile hour spent together, whether or not you're on our program. But of course, I want you to apply. Prudence has asked a question around being a final year bachelor student. Um, so you're right, uh, Prudence, while we do have some Bachelor of Education students on our program, we, are, we support the three plus one model, which is undergrad plus PGCE. You will qualify as a teacher um, at the end of this year. And congratulations to you, Prudence. I, I, feel like, I feel like that needs some celebration in itself. You're a bit too advanced for us. At the moment, we are supporting people who are still wanting to qualify as a teacher. So go on and do your honors, do your masters, do your doctorate, and continue waving the flag of, of educational change through, through what you're studying. I, I hope that does answer uh, your, your question um, in this context. So those are the two questions I can see. Uh, and Ancha will help me if I've missed anything, but I'll just keep going for the sake of time for now. Well, What's then. on the screen? Shop. Thanks, Ancha. What's on the screen looks simple. It's actually kind of serious, to be honest, in that it may be prudence and prudences of the world. I'm speaking to you to a degree is that JGF has taken the position that when you want to affect change and transform aspects of an educational system in the country and we invest in individuals, so we're not scaling, we invest in we invest in Chloe as Chloe is, as she shows up in the day of the selection process, and all 100, 134 people, Andres, Amber, whichever, we invest in people. But we also know people have diverse needs, and people show up in different ways. Therefore, the journey to impact may not be one plus one equals two, but all over the place. And anyone who's completed a thesis knows it's all over the place. It's not a linear engagement. So at JGF, we support three pathways to impact. We believe you need to be in the classroom for at least two years. Get a sense of what's going on. Understand the education system from the inside. Figure out where your passions might be in education. And we believe the, the best footing, the, the best start for you is in the classroom. But we also know there might be more for, for some people. So we support educational leader. As you've heard, Ansha, in my own bios, this is a strong impetus in even the very people who run JGF. Educational leader expert teacher and educational entrepreneur. Now it's important to just simmer on that for a little bit because you will go into the classroom when you are on the JGF fellowship. You will teach for two years and some of our students already are saying, I don't want to leave the classroom. Yes, I thought I wanted to impact policy and, and teacher unions and whatnot, but they're saying, actually, I want to be in the classroom. And to be very honest with you, I am a former high school teacher. I can't wait to go back. I'm doing my things here around my life legacy, but I want to go back to the classroom and, and maybe not deal with grade nines, but, but generally I really want to be back there. But we also accept that, that you might want to teach for a bit and then go, I feel a bit stifled by this. I want to, I want to re redo Satu. I want to redo our, our Mr. Tech qualifications. I, and we support that journey to impact as well. And some people go, actually, I've noticed a gap in the system and I want to solve it. I want to present a solution or a resolution to this through entrepreneurship and we support that as well. And to ground this area, it might sound like too good to be true, but 
to ground this, we have a candidate fellow that I like to reference at this point in, in when we share the opportunity. He is an un, so he's doing three plus one undergraduate degree plus his PGCE. Never mind the fact he's already teaching in various contexts in schools, but his passion is he joined and got accepted to JGF because he shared with us that his passion is not so much the classroom. Now, this is his story. Not so much. He's not really that interested in being a, a full time classroom teacher. But what bothers him, what problem he wants to solve in education are commuter schools. And he's from the Western Cape. So commuter schools that have to travel quite far, thanks to spatial apartheid, before they can actually reach the school that they need to be and be at. And his problem that he wants to solve in South African education is improving the transport system for school going people and, and teachers. Now, that is massive. If you've ever lectured or, or tutored or been a teacher or a leader of a classroom or community, it's kind of important that people are there and it's kind of important that they're largely on time. So the problem he wants to solve is quite particular, but it falls quite well within these three pathways or journeys to impact beyond the classroom. Um, and that I just want to bring in here and ground it for you so that you, you recognize that we're supporting your qualification as a teacher, but it's much more than that. And if you're, if you're looking for funding um, only, then, then shut you know, go ahead. But, but JJF asks more from you because we believe that once we've selected you, we are in your corner and we're willing to go with you for the long way. I'm going to change slides here and answer some questions again, like, oh yeah, sounds cool, but what's the catch, All right? That's usually when I used to visit schools and universities, that's usually what now are on people's minds. And the question is, right? So what, what do you need from me? I believe you can read, so I'm gonna let you. And UWC. Sorry, this is a dated slide, and UWC. These are the things that we need from you as graduates or third year, final year students. And it's different for our undergraduate intake. So we accept two pathways, uh, two intakes, grade 12s and first years and graduates or third years. So Leanne, you're stuck in the middle to a degree, but we can chat over email or WhatsApp. Um, but th these are the things that we're looking for from an applicant um, for the graduate intake. I wanna bring our attention to the last point, the leadership, achievement, orientation, passion. These are things that are hard to quantify, but we ask for it anyway. Anyone can have a great academic transcript, but we're interested in positions of influence or leadership. What achievements have you, have you done or been awarded with or recognized? And what are your passions? You are more than just your transcript and we wanna know more about you with, about that. And the reason it doesn't say anything specific is because our, our country is diverse and our lived experiences are so diverse. We get applicants from people who say they've been unemployed for five years. And I go, great, that's fine. What have you done in those five years? Tell me about the initiatives you've started. Tell me about the, the mosque or church you've worked in. We're interested in you and your potential and the demonstrated potential of leadership, achievement, orientation, and passion that you might carry. On the next slide, I'm going to uh, tell you what the fellowship covers or the scholarship, what we cover. And then there'll be a pretty picture and the application link. But then I really want to open up for questions or conversations or curiosities. We've moved relatively quickly through this presentation. Um, but as true to JGF, we rather end early than late. So, so there's no problem if that happens. So if there are any people who have been teachers in this room, and I guess I'm speaking to Golden Key folks, uh, uh, staff or, or, or leaders there, this is a bit of the golden ticket, so to speak. I assume you can read, so I'm going to not read this out, but you can look on what's on the screen. Chloe, if you're still there, is a, let's, let's have a bit of a risk. So Chloe, I didn't invite to the session. She showed up. <laughs> they showed up, sorry, as, as in, their, in their fullness. Um, and Chloe, there's, there's one point on the screen that is a little bit um, 
can be quite vague, right? So we know what tuition coverage means, accommodation, meals, textbooks, tutor allowances, monthly pocket monies, that's what the stipend, what stipend means. But the development aspect, and the, what this speaks to is a, a, something we call a program officer. Now, Ancha is a program officer, so, and she shared a bit about her levels of, of, of service and, and, and support for our candidate fellows. Once you're on the program, you're then called candidate fellows. Chloe, it would be helpful if you're around and up to it, to either drop in the chat to unmute yourself. Oh, wait, wait, I am. So Chloe, it would be helpful if you drop in the chat, just a couple of your own words on how you describe uh, the role of the program officer as we open for questions and whatnot, because we really believe that that individual touch is what matters the most for our students. So uh, while you're dropping and thinking of your thoughts, Chloe, you can, you can just drop it in the chat about how you would describe um, the role of the program officer. And while she's doing that, I kind of just want to share a bit around uh, JGF's focus on program officers and individual support. We believe they're the glue. They would keep things going. So Ancha taking time out of a busy schedule to be able to present you is massive to have a program officer in this space. At our undergrad intake, we facilitate the transition from high school to university, as everyone in this room knows is the biggest drop off, drop, drop -off point for many first year students. And at the graduate intake, the program officer's role for people like Chloe, because she's completing a PGCE, is the transition from student to professional. Again, a massive shock to the system. And, and anyone will know who has been in the classroom and teaching that the first year of teaching can be like a smack through the face. Um, um, yes, sure, why not, Natasha? So Chloe, you're about to get promoted to panelist status, um, and then you can, I guess, text, uh, write your, your, your response. So if you want to talk, you can too. You just got to let me know. Um, so Natasha is busy upgrading you, it appears. Silence is fine, everyone. We're just doing some admin in the background. Ah, Chloe, you have been promoted. Welcome. Why, thank you. Um, I'm probably just going to be speaking um, over the mic because currently, you know, haven't been dressed for the occasion. <laughs> no, <laughs> Chloe, I'm please. Cool. No problem. No problem. Okay. <laughs> um, so the PO, what I've experienced so far is um, a complete mentorship and guiding in finding out who I am as an educator and who I'd like to be as an educator. Um, there's a constant communication and a support um, to find out if I am doing okay with my studies um, and where it is I would like to be one day. Um, guiding me with regards to, okay, so in my instance, I am a design and visual arts um, graduate to a certain degree and that's the field I'd like to go into but even so there's so many other aspects that I would like to touch on and he or my PO has assisted me to kind of figure out my journey and how I would accomplish those certain aspects and then of course checking in with me to find out if I am actually just calming down for a while and re gaining my composure and what it is that I would like to end up doing. So it's it's like one of those, um, when you go to AA meetings and you have that, that designated person to check up on you and find out if you're good, if you're doing well, um, that is definitely how I feel as if a PO or what a PO is to me in that instance. So personal, personal development is a very major component of what the PO does for JGA fellows. Chloe, I appreciate your uh, courage to speak on, on the spot. Thank you. Um, it, it was a lucky, as I say, that you were in the audience and I could bring your voice in. So thank you for that. Um, as proper teachers, I guess we believe your voice is way more important than anything I could say or Ancha could say. Um, Ancha, is there anything from your side that you might want to bring in at this stage before we open up for, for more broader questions? Anything I might have missed? Yeah, so just to, you know, add on to what Chloe was saying, I was about to type it out, that at JGF, every candidate fellow 
is an individual. Um, it's not just like a number out there, or just a name, but literally every person we know there is this person, there is Andres, there is Chloe, they, and we know certain details about them so that we actually when we speak to them, it's a tailor-made communication. Mm. And so I just mm. want to assure you that you will be supported and you will be supported as an individual and not just part of a group and your personal aspirations, your goals, and in everything that you hope for will be supported for you as an individual and not, you know, as part of some group, but for everyone, we hold everyone's hand. We, we, we're big enough to hold each hand. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I wanted to say, um, Carla, thank you. Awesome, thanks Ancha. Um, yeah, sharp. So there's a link on the screen. Our applications close on the 30th of July. Um, they were gonna close on the 19th, but there are some very strange things happening in our current lived experience, so we've extended it. Um, so we will accept your applications. It's online, it's on that link. There's an eligibility screening. So basically saying things, you know, if you're over 30, then unfortunately we're not ready for you yet. Or if you are a, um, uh, if you don't fit the, the application stuff that, that I'd mentioned a little bit earlier, but please, it all begins with an application process. I've spoken a fair amount. So I am going to stop and allow anybody to unmute themselves or drop a question or, or raise your hand through the Zoom functionality so that I can bring your voice in. Can we just ask if anyone has a question to put it in the Q&A section so that Carla and Ancha can answer it for you? Perfect, thanks Juanita. I see the open ones, but Thank I have dealt, dealt with them. So Prudence, Leanne, and Leanne, I've dropped my email in the chat for you to follow up with your transcript so that I can give you some guidance there. If I can just come right. in from my side, I just want mm. to say that it was such a lovely presentation on the Jake's Jewel Fellowship. Um, what caught me through the whole presentation was that personal connection that you have with your students, which is very important especially in the times that we are facing now. People want to know that they are supported. They are, um, they have someone that is there guiding them and leading them and that, that also want to walk a journey with them. And that's what really shone through for me. I think when the first testimonial came up, the lady that was speaking, she said, she realizes that teachers change people's lives. And then mm -hmm. I just want to recite a sentence here that says, um, as the profession of being a teacher, we should remember that it creates all professions. And that is so true for me. That is the basis of all the sectors that we have in society, is if we didn't have our teachers, what would we have in our professional world today? So from my side, I really appreciated your presentation. And I'm looking forward to hearing a very, very good comeback from all the students who will enroll with you. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. I don't see any questions. There's one from, from Ipe Ling. Ah, um, there we go. I don't know. Would you like to answer that one, Carla, please? Yes, of course. Definitely. Thank you. So the, the question is, are students from Northwest University allowed to apply because it was not listed on the slides? Great question. And that's some feedback to me to refine some of these slides. Um, Ipe Ling, we accept any graduate okay, from from local and abroad and we've got abroad uh, South African citizens of course uh, or permanent residences who have studied abroad and are now wanting to do their PGCE at one of our partner universities. So simpler is that you can graduate from any university but you need to do your PGCE at one of our partner universities which uh, would have been UWC which was not on the list but it is now UWC, UCT, UJ, WITS and the University of Victoria. We don't uh, influence which university you need to study at just as much as what course you do. So Chloe, for example, is doing uh, is becoming a design and arts teacher. We've got music, we've got science, we've got business studies, English, history, Afrikaans, Kosa, 
as teaching method subjects. So we invest in people and whatever your passion is, we'll back you. We just need you to study at one of those five partner universities. So regardless of where you've graduated, you are welcome, Ipaling. I hope that answers your question. Fantastic. We've got a lovely comment from Chloe in the chat function. I'll read it out to the attendees. She says, absolutely. JGF isn't just a scholarship program. They become family. We celebrate every moment in your life and support you through all the things you struggle with. Thousand times 10 recommended. What a lovely ah, testimony. Thank you, Chloe. And also she's on the program, so there's no brownie points here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure thank it was you. from the bottom of her heart. <laughs> thank you, Chloe. Yes, I believe it. If we have mm. no further questions, I'm just checking the question Q&A section just to make sure we don't miss anyone. No comments in the chat, no further comments. We'd just like to thank Carla and Ancha and Chloe. Thank you so much. It was a lovely webinar. We mm. sincerely appreciate you. We enjoyed it. Thank you for the valuable information. And we, we thank you from the Golden Key South Africa head office for making time to be here with us today. For the attendees, this webinar will be posted on the Golden Key Southern Africa YouTube channel. So keep a lookout for that if you want to refer back to the slides or any information that you want to revisit. So thank you very much. You are now welcome to leave this webinar by clicking the leave button at the right hand side of the screen at the bottom. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and keep well. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic week further. Thank Bye -bye. you. Cheers, Bye. Chloe. Bye.